Good morning, dear listeners. Today, we will study the poem Amanda. Amanda is a poem composed by Robin Klein, the Australian poetess, Australian author. She is a living poetess. She was born in 1936. She has composed this poem about a girl who is not ready to listen to her parents. Who is the guardian? Who is the parent over here? That is not mentioned in this poem. But tone of the poem suggests that the speaker of the poem is a mother. Mother who is extremely worried about Amanda's personality, her body language, her actions and as the tone of the poem suggests, Amanda seems to be a teenager. This girl doesn't listen to her mother. The poem starts with, don't buy, bite your nails, Amanda. Instruction, don't do this. What not to do? Don't bite your nails. It's a bad habit. We know very well. Mother is giving instruction to the daughter that don't bite your nails, Amanda. It's a bad habit. Don't do this. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Hunch your shoulders just signifies a body posture which is to be noticed as a lazy body posture. So it is what that I am trying to tell you that Amanda shows herself as a lazy girl. Stop that slouching and sit up straight Amanda. Once again instruction after instruction mother is giving to this girl. This girl is not ready to listen. That's why mother is repeating the instruction frequently times and again again and again stop that slouching and sit up straight amanda in which world you are living my daughter try to improve yourself this is not this is not the mannerism you have to learn the mannerism your body language is not good sit up straight you don't sit straight you sit in idle manner try to improve yourself mother is giving instruction like this now this girl is lost in her imagination as a typical teenager you will have to you will have to care that when the poem starts the poem starts with instruction by the mother and then then thinking imagination by this girl once again once again instruction by the mother once again imagination starts of this girl once again, the instruction of the mother, once again, this imagination of this girl, and then once again, instruction of the mother. It means instruction of the mother and imagination of this girl is going step by step, and you have to find it out. The poem starts with the instruction, and when mother tells that don't bite your nails, Amanda, don't do this, it's a very bad habit. Biting the nails is a very bad habit, and so just adjusting your shoulder in a very odd manner that is also not good like a typical teenager you are behaving and stop that slouching that and sit up straight your body language your body body posture is your body posture is not good try to improve it and there is languid emerald sea now she started she started thinking about she started imagining rather than to say that there is an emerald sea and where the sole inhabitant is being. She is lost in the imagination. She imagines that there is, there is a languid. Languid, languid you can say that very calm. Very calm and, and relaxed. She is there and there and color of the water is totally green like this precious stone, emerald. And where the sole inhabitant is me. And she is, she lives at that place 
alone. She is alone there and she enjoys her life. And a moment drifting blissfully. She, is, she compares her life to, a, to this imaginary creature, Mermaid. That she is just like a Mermaid and she is enjoying her life, drifting blissfully. And she is enjoying there the life. It means she is without control. She doesn't want any control in her life. That's why she imagines like that, that she is lost in the imagination and she doesn't want to listen anything about parents' instruction. Then once again, mother is asking, did you finish your homework, Amanda? Have you completed? As a responsible mother, mother is asking the question, have you finished your homework, Amanda? Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? And what about cleaning of the room? Have you done it? Amanda is not giving any response. I thought I told you to clean your shoes and cleaning your shoes also. It's also not going to be done by you. It's a very bad thing I'm telling you. And you have to take care of all these things. So instruction by instruction. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. And then did you finish your homework, Amanda? Question after and then question. After after instruction, then question. Have you finished your homework? Have you have you cleaned your room? And have you cleaned your shoes? So many questions. But Amanda is not going to give an answer. Instead, she is lost in her imagination. Once again, she is lost and she is saying that she, she is expressing her, her imaginary skills over here. That she imagines her, herself as, as an orphan and she, she just about her, it is clearly written that I am an orphan. I do not have any parent. And roaming the street i pattern soft roaming the street moving from one street to another street here like a like a wanderer and i pattern soft dust with my hushed bared feet and i i just pattern soft dust whatever i want wherever i want i go i just trample everything under my feet i move and especially soft dust with my hushed bare feet my feet are enough to trust anything and because I am the sole inhabitant, I, I, I am the sole ruler of this world like this. It's, you can say that her dominating spirit also has been revealed over here. The silence is golden and the freedom is sweet. And I love the silence. This girl wants to uh, tell that I don't want any scolding and, and what? That and the freedom is sweet. And freedom when there is nobody. To disturb me then i will be happy then she is then she is happy then this girl is happy so this girl doesn't want any instruction by mother by father anyone she wants such type of world she wants such type of world that's why she has des described uh, like this her feeling and it has been clearly uh, written over here that whatever she wants she doesn't want any parent in her life because she doesn't like instruction she wants to live a free life then once again mother is giving instruction that don't eat that chocolate Amanda. You eat too much chocolates my daughter. Don't eat too much. It is very harmful and remember your acne Amanda, your pimples. You have to remember and that's why you have not to eat too much. Don't do this. And then will you please look at me when I am speaking to you Amanda. But Amanda you are such type of daughter, such type of girl. You are not listening to me properly. And eye to eye contact also I am, I am missing that eye to eye contact between a mother and daughter. You are not doing that also. It's very bad. Don't do this. Please look at me. Please listen to me. My instruction. As a mother I want your improved behavior. I want to see you as a better personality but you are not ready to change yourself this is very bad and uh, yes it is once again uh, she described herself i am Rapunzel. it's it's imaginary it's imaginary it's a fairy tale this girl this girl ha has very long long hair lives in a tower and in, and what that witch has locked her there and then she enjoys her life because she lives alone there in the tower she doesn't want any disturbance. So here also, I am. I have not a care. I do not. I do not want anybody here. I am alone, and I, I want secluded place like Rapunzel and live in a tower. I live in a tower, is tranquil and rare because that tower is, that tower is secluded place. That tower is a lonely place. I love that place. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. And like this Rapunzel, she also imagines herself like this. 
like this uh, fairy tale character that she will have also a very bright hair and uh, her bright hair will never will never be deformed will never be dirty this is what she is completely lost in the imagination you can find it out and then here once again mother is asking that mother is saying giving instruction stop that sulking at one samanda please don't show your body posture like this that you are you are just showing as you have done a lot in your life you need not to learn anything this is very bad and you are always so moody amanda moody you are obstinate you are obdurate you are not listening to me listening to my instructions how can be a how can you be a good girl this is the problem anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda and if anybody will notice that i am scolding you so uh, i am scolding you like this so uh, they can understand that i am very bad mother for you you have to think but i am not a bad mother actually i want that you should be a good girl i think that you are not a responsible girl i think you are not a Uh, you are not a good girl so as a mother she wants to uh, guide her daughter well but daughter is not ready daughter is not ready to be convinced daughter is not ready to be convinced daughter is not ready to be listened daughter is not ready to be guided instead she 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 is lost in the imagination and she she imagines herself as an imaginary girl she doesn't want to uh, face this realistic world which is not so good for this girl especially mother's instruction so this is what all about this poem uh, that robin clean has just expressed expressed the imagination of a teenager girl very well and the instruction of the mother obviously if the girl if daughter will be like this so mother will never be happy and in this way you can find that girl is not ready to listen the instruction of the mother the, that rhyme scheme we find of this poem this is a, we have very irregular rhyme scheme and you find that the figures of speech literary devices stop that slouching once again the repetition of the sound s and then uh, there will be alliteration figure of speech stop that slouching here repetition of the sound s here yes here that it will be alliteration figure of speech there then you find once again that yes yes and here also you can find here did you did you the line uh, that starts with the the same words that you find here and a for a figure of speech and a for a figure of speech you can you can find it out and then here once again yes stop that sulking once again repetition of the sound as that's why here you we notice alliteration figure of speech so uh, in this way that we can find it out this poem is actually a conversation between a mother and a girl tone of the poem suggests it although it has not been uh, given anywhere that mother is saying something or she is uh, or this girl is a daughter but as name indicates that she is a girl and then tone of the poem suggests that this is conversation between a mother and a daughter daughter doesn't respond instead she is lost in her imagination and she uh, she just imagines herself as a mermaid as imaginary creature sometimes rapunzel so she is lost in the imagination she doesn't want to face the imaginary uh, see, realistic life instead she is lost in the imaginary life so in this way uh, the poem is a typical poem about a teenager girl and the poet is successful to bring out the few characteristics negative characteristics of a teenager girl thank you everyone for listening for watching thank you